Hey everyone, this is Dave A. Gardner, and you're listening to the heart of Juliet Jones' fan fiction podcast. This is part five of Billy Cooper Comes to Town. Meanwhile, back in that overly priced real estate location known as the city, high above the smog on the 21st floor of the Guantanamo building, in the offices of Atlas News Service, it was like everyone and their uncle was on vacation. The quietness in the newsroom was palpable. Daphne Delilah, one of the many females on the Cooper research team, was bored to tears, having finished her two pages of work three days ago. Donald Donnie Dodson, a.k.a. The Dodds, the Metro editor at Atlas, stepped into Daphne's office, sucking on his corncob pipe, with his button nose and two eyes made out of coal. "'Where's, uh, Billy Cooper?' asked the Dodds, meandering into the office like he hadn't a care in the world, which was a bad sign at a newspaper. Daphne sighed, leaning her cheek on the palm of her hand. In the boondocks specifically, she complained in a whiny voice. A village named Devon, where he will undoubtedly be chewed up by a local belle, named Julia Jones, who took violent exception to his allegation that unmarried women over the age of twenty-one wanted that way. <clears throat> well, the Dodds had really nothing to say to that, for he remembered that he had read the article himself, and he had voiced his hearty approval over his sixth bottle of scotch down at Beebe's, the local hangout after work. Well known to young and old, Beebe's was the only place in the city where every adult male could go to waste their hard-earned cash on booze and share their sorrows to anyone within earshot, of which the Dodds was chief executive soundboard. Just then, back in the backwater called Devon, Eve Jones rushed to answer the door. The doorbell could mean only one thing, and one thing only. Either Deirdre was coming over to return Eve's I Got Lucky album of Elvis Presley that she had borrowed for a dance with her boyfriend, or the other one thing, Francois was coming over to ask Julie out. Problem was, Eve didn't speak French, and either way, she was Julie's first line of defense. And she took that vocation as seriously as if she were called up to the army. If that was Francois, Julie had once coached her, pull open the door like you mean it. He likes it when you act tough and harsh with him, so scream at the man, she had said. He loves that. Eve knew that she had been kidding, but in the military, you know, an order was an order. Eve wrenched open the door and was about to get her spec ops challenge on when she had noticed that the handsome gentleman staring back at her was clearly not Francois and wasn't even French. But hello, he had the most gorgeous blue eyes. Tall, handsome, and dashingly dashing. A mouth that could curl slightly, an eyebrow that could lift, and every woman in this side of the Western Hemisphere would be putty in his hands, just like Eve was now. Like chocolate that you forget to pull out of your pocket after three days, melting into that look of innocence and foray, falling headlong into the sheer magnificence of his half-priced cologne. The man spoke. I'm Billy Cooper of Atlas News Service. Miss Jones? he asked, removing his fedora and holding it to his chest. That's me, Eve replied. Or, or did you mean Miss Juliet Jones? 